Well, folks, greetings and welcome. March 1st, uh, this is Joseph Fritz, Executive Director for the ICI, welcoming you to our 2023 program review. Um, just want to go over uh, uh, the things that we have this year. A few things have changed from prior years, uh, trying to keep it interesting. And uh, it, a, an interesting thing to take a note, this is the ICI's 70th year. We'll be celebrating our anniversary uh, this July coming up. So um, hopefully we have a few surprises for folks as the year uh, goes uh, continues. So let's take a look at what we have here. Um, first, I just want to go over the agenda briefly. We're going to address our training programs, our awards program, uh, our webinar program, and our annual meetings. And you'll note the addition of the Additive Manufacturing for Investment Casting Symposium. That is officially going to be an annual event. Um, going forward, it'll be uh, it'll be conducted in July. But uh, this year, we're going to be doing it in a couple of weeks. So I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you folks there. All right. Moving forward, I'd um, like to... Uh, address uh, the investment casting specialist certification program. And rather than me doing all the talking, we have uh, uh, Russ Rosemate with us who runs that program, and I'm going to turn things over to him. It's all yours, Russ. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Joe. Um, uh, the certification class is uh, running along smoothly. It'll be our 21st, 21st year, 21 times of doing the class. And it's going to be our arrival and departure dates. We arrive on uh, May 31st, uh, 2023. Everyone departs on June 8th. And so the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh are all training classes where we go through the entire process of investment casting. And I think the class is almost full. Uh, I think there's only very few spots left, uh, but we cover the entire casting process so our first days deal with uh, right in the beginning the wax we spend a whole day making waxes building trees shooting waxes testing waxes move on the next day into manufacturing of all the slurries we need to use and stuccos and materials that we use to actually build the shell we look at a little bit of tooling and talk about tooling and how we design and build tooling look at gating and feeding then we go step back a little bit and look at good proper casting design and then get into de-waxing shell fire on um, the, the next week because we work through the weekend and we get into metallurgy then um, we actually go out and as, as we're building the trees during the class we're building our mold uh, starting on um, monday we de-wax shell fire on tuesday pour uh, and do casting cleaning on Wednesday, and everybody takes their castings home uh, uh, after an eight long day event in Pittsburgh, Kansas. So that's well, it in a nutshell. Well, well, thank you, Russ. Uh, I'll tell you that uh, we've seen a, a very strong response rate to this year's program. Uh, usually, we don't see it filling up until after we hold our spring meeting, and yeah. um, we had people banging on the door before uh, the uh, last year was done with. So, uh, I'm looking That's forward to a good event this year. Thank you. Yeah, there's a couple changes. We're we decided to move to a hotel this year, so we'll see how that goes. It it does move us further from our facilities, but uh, there's a few more of amenities at the hotel than the than the dorms we're offering. So we're going to try that for a year, see how we like it, and then reassess that um, um, for the years after. But but it'll be a a little bit of improvement in the type of uh, bed that everybody gets, and the hotel rooms have their own fridge, microwave, television, and and it was getting kind of sparse at the dorm. So we thought we'd make a little upgrade. All right. Well, very good. Well, thank you, Russ. Thanks, sir. Thanks for doing it. And we we love it. And uh, we look forward to the entire group coming. And like I said, we're we're almost full. There's only about three openings left. All right. Terrific. All right. Uh, let's move on. The uh, next uh, uh, educational program that we'd like to address is the uh, Investment Casting Process Control Seminar. And to talk about that, I'm going to turn the uh, stage over to uh, Andy Bomberger. All right. Thank you, Joe. Um, as you can see on the slide, the upcoming 
process control seminar is scheduled for September 12 through 14. Um, the way that is structured is approximately slightly longer than a, than a half day per day is uh, scheduled for the seminar time. Um, last seminar we did 10 o'clock Eastern to about five o'clock Eastern. Um, so, you know, the nice thing with that is it allows folks to uh, stay local. Um, they have the opportunity to, to get some work done in the morning or uh, depending what time zone they're in, maybe in the afternoon after the class is done. So um, it's, you know, two, two and a half days of seminar uh, by the uh, uh, using a, a virtual classroom setting. Uh, so the the process control class or seminar has been around for uh, it's over 10 years. If, if memory serves, I think the first uh, class we offered was in 2010. So it's not quite as mature as what the uh, certific certification class is, but it's it's been around for um, more than a decade at this point. Um, at the heart of the process control class is a uh, problem solving process that's based on the DMAIC method. Uh, and we've themed it along with the investment casting process. Uh, for those that don't know that the DMAIC process is define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Uh, so basically we have a, a flow chart that goes through each of those steps and uh, provides, provides the, the students uh, a process to, to use the DMAIC process through the investment casting uh, uh, setting. So we do teach the the process control aspect, not the process. Uh, the investment casting certification program would be an excellent building block to lead into the process control seminar. Uh, we provide instructional lectures, group activities with real world investment cast scenarios. This will give the students the background learning as well as hands on experience working in a group setting. Um, like I said uh, earlier, this, this program started about 10, 13, somewhere around that uh, years ago as an in-person learning event. Um, over the last three or so years, we've shifted it to a web-based virtual classroom. Um, and one of the, the nice things about that the, uh, the seminar is you don't really need any special tools or software to participate in the program. Uh, we use Excel. And um, the, the thought process there was that uh, most folks have either Excel or Sheets or something similar to that readily at hand, and they can uh, apply what they learn immediately back in their foundry. We cover such topics as CP, CPK, measurement system analysis, histograms, gauge R&R, ANOVA, cause and effect matrix, and different types of variation. Uh, this provides a toolkit and a process for the students to return to the foundry and apply. Uh, we also reinforce that process control happens on the floor and not behind the desk. So some feedback that we've had from the classes uh, has been overwhelmingly positive with um, either a good or, or the vast majority of the students rate the, the seminar as excellent. Um, what they typically like about the, the seminars is the hands-on activities and working in smaller groups. And this does allow for 100% participation through the class. We, uh, typically, you can't sit in the corner and, and hide everybody's involved in the, in the seminar. Um, it also stimulates thought and uh, liked, uh, with a virtual setting, they liked that they could get some work done before the class and they didn't need to tack on one or two days of travel to get back and forth to the, to the seminar. Um, with the move to the virtual classroom, we, we've had some technology issues that, that we're working to resolve, uh, and they're pretty minor in nature, but specifically it's you know file sharing and controlling the breakout groups, and we are working to address that for the next seminar. Um, the other challenge that we had with it was, um, you know, when we're in person, you can kind of walk around the room and see where everybody's at. Uh, particularly with with Excel, not everybody's on the same uh, page there with with the Excel capabilities. Um, 
so we're we're creating and and modifying some of the material to facilitate um, working virtually. Um, some additions that we'll have uh, for this upcoming seminar: we're we're adding uh, more control exercises to demonstrate the implement implementation, and we're refining some of the print and digital data available prior to the class. So that's all. I have Joe. All right. Th thank you very much, Andy. Uh, appreciate the, all the work uh, you and the team have done to put this together. Just to give a little bit of a background, this uh, used to be a live program, and it was totally redesigned several years ago and, and to continue as a live program. The pandemic pushed us into the virtual environment, and uh, the, the team, you know, they just sat right down and got to work putting this all together. And all of us had some concerns about doing this virtually. But uh, last year, it was extremely well received. And uh, the fruits of the labor uh, were uh, there in the testimonies, uh, testimonials that we had received from the students. So thank you very much for your efforts and to the rest of the team. Um, the uh, process control seminar and the certification program generally work hand in hand. Uh, one shows you how to make it. The other one shows you how to control it. Uh, and uh, it's been a good uh, or a great ICI offering. And uh, we're currently discussing other programs that we're looking to offer. Uh, one of which, which again, this is a future program, but uh, looking for a certification program for the use of additive manufacturing in investment casting. I think that uh, we might hear a little bit more about that later in the in the call. All right, let's move on. The uh, the uh, next area I'd like to address is regional meetings. And uh, um, I'll talk a little bit about this. Uh, and I like going over history. Uh, the ICI used to conduct regional meetings all the time up until 9-11. And it put a major kibosh on the regional meeting. And uh, it wasn't until a couple of years ago, about uh, four or five years ago, we reintroduced the regional meeting. We grew to a point that we we're doing about four a year, which is really optimal. Um, then we got hit with a pandemic. So last year we held our first regional meeting since uh, the, we had the pandemic, and that was uh, uh, conducted at uh, um, Aristocast. We do try to hold these events. Um, at a location where we can get a foundry tour worked in. Uh, the typical focus is um, on a series of educational presentations tied to the process. We try to have different presentations at every regional meeting in case people want to follow us around. And quite surprisingly, people do. I see people tra uh, traveling across three time zones to go to these events. Um, but uh, they're, they're, they're educational. The ICI provides uh, continental breakfast uh, and lunch. So we always look for sponsors, but uh, uh, the fact of the matter is we provide it if we don't get any sponsors. And it's free of charge to uh, all members and to the industry. Um, we're trying to stimulate and grow interest in the industry. And uh, we look to our uh, uh, our members to help us do that. So there's always an opportunity to be a presenter or to offer your facility to uh, host such an operation. And we would conduct it at a at a hotel and then everybody would travel into the facility for a tour. Typically, all the training takes place in the morning, uh, roughly four or five presentations. Uh, then usually a safety talk during lunch uh, before we head over to the plant for a facility tour. And we generally run about 60 delegates. Uh, last year being our first one since the pandemic and people were still feeling some of the economic pressures, we had, I believe, 33 delegates sign up for that one. Um, we've yet to establish when and where we're going to be holding them this year. I hope to see uh, that we do two. We're definitely going to do at least one, but I'd like to see two for this year and uh, get back to doing four a year in 2024. All right, let's move on. Um, 
let's talk a little bit about our awards program, our awards and recognition program, because we have some changes in this area as well. And uh, we do our award ceremony at our annual technical conference. This year, we'll talk more about the technical conference later. It's being held in August. Again, residual effect to the pandemic, but starting in 2024, we'll be back on our usual October schedule for this event. Um, this year, it's going to be at the David Lawrence Convention Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And again, this is open to the general public. Uh, there's a fee for this one, obviously. Members get a discounted rate. Uh, let's talk about the awards. The first is the annual casting contest. And historically, the way we've conducted this is castings were sent into the ICI. We would catalog them. We would photograph them. We would um, take all the write-ups and assemble them, provide them to a panel from the technical committee. They would come into the office to do a live review of the castings, and they would, uh, based on the, the, uh, the criteria, which is we want a casting that's going to promote the industry. We want a casting that shows benefit and use to its uh, uh, to to the um, uh, customer. In, in effect, how was this of value to the customer? And uh, we want it to be a showpiece, something we can use to help promote our process. Well, that's a lot of back and forth. We would then ship it to the uh, to the event, and then we would ship it back to uh, the folks who uh, provided the casting. It's a lot of shipping, a lot, and a lot of handling. This year, we're trying something new and different. We're at, we are having our members ship castings directly to the venue. Uh, when they submit their applications uh, for the contest, uh, they are also to provide high-resolution photographs of the casting, which we will use for the magazine and for the displays. Now. Because of this, every casting that we receive is going to be displayed. Usually, we uh, would display just the winners. So this is uh, gives everybody an opportunity to have their casting front and center. And the voting is done by the delegates. The people who are going through the expo hall will be able to cast their ballots for who they feel the winners are in each category. So we're going to hear the voice of the people. So instead of having... Uh, four judges, we're going to have 700 judges. So it's going to be uh, a very different type of contest, and we really look forward to seeing how it works. Um, so much less handling, much easier on ICI staff, which everybody breathed a sigh of relief when we came up with this, and uh, we are very hopeful that this will uh, go uh, well. Innovator of the Year, again, we give one of these awards a year. Um, it is a mem it, it actually takes two members to nominate this. You need a nomination and a second. And it's uh, it, the form is fairly self-explanatory. We're looking for a company that has uh, implemented innovation and is willing to share it with the industry. Again, we're trying to promote um, uh, growth within our industry technically as well as in sales and everything else. But we want to make sure that we're doing things right. And this is one way we do that. Um, we've been uh, giving this award out now for about seven years. And uh, it, I always enjoy reading the um, applications that come in because it's always a learning experience about what our members are doing out there. Um, Hall of Honor uh, in induction ceremony. Uh, the Hall of Honor, we're looking for uh, for people who have individually made major contributions to the industry, as well as making contributions to uh, the, the, the community at large, to society. Um, you know, we're looking for well-rounded people that uh, are outstanding in their field and have been there supporting the industry uh and using their skills as a leader to develop people. Um, we look at, uh, I think, five or six different criteria about uh, a person's track record before choosing this, uh, people who will induct. We can induct up to five uh, uh, living um, applicants per year, and, uh, in, uh, and there's an unlimited number of uh, folks that we can award posthumously. But as far as those that are uh, still kicking and breathing, uh, we limit that to five per year. 
member emeritus, normally known as the uh, formerly known as the honorary membership. Um, this is strictly at the discretion of our board of directors. Um, every March, the the BOD is asked to provide us with nomination forms. Um, they are consolidated and reviewed by every member on the board. And at the March, uh, uh, and, and or actually at the April meeting, it's after the quarter closes, um, they will be taking a vote at their board meeting and identifying uh, any um, buddy who they feel is uh, appropriate for the Hall of Honor. I'm sorry, the uh, member emeritus. And just so you folks know about what, what the criteria is, so you don't have to go digging into your bylaws, um, has to be an individual who is retired, no longer working in the industry, but during their career has uh, been supportive of the Investment Casting Institute, uh, helping us do what we do. And in retirement, they continue to show an interest in the industry and continue to support the ICI. So this is the uh, um, recognizing those people who believe in what we do and are here to support us. Um, the Executive Director's Award for Volunteerism. Now, this award has been given twice. Uh, uh, Russ Rosemate, who spoke earlier, was our first recipient. And uh, Rick Alanis, who uh, has been uh, donating his time to the ICI as um, free legal counsel. He comes, he's been coming to our uh, leadership meetings for over 20 years. He's never charged us for transportation, never charged us for food, never charged us for lodging. And he's uh, been free with his advice to the ICI and to its membership as it pertains to labor law. Um, really an outstanding volunteer. He had received this also. The uh, This award is given solely on my discretion. So I actually uh, really uh, look uh, very carefully at people who are volunteering, and it's only been awarded twice since I put this in place uh, about 10 years ago. So I'm really looking for people who are truly outstanding uh, in their support of the industry and their support of the ICI um, and in support of uh, um, uh, um, suppliers and everybody throughout the industry, the customers. It, uh, really, it's not just being a volunteer for the ICI. It's a, it's a volunteer in general. We look at community activity as well and so forth. And lastly, the best paper award. This is selected uh, by the delegates at the technical conference annually. Annually, uh, we uh, we take voting throughout the uh, throughout the three days, and we look at uh, who was uh, ranked the highest of um, the twenty some odd papers we have presented, and uh, make this award presentation um, at the uh, end of the event. Um, I just want to throw a plug to. Uh, Art uh, to Artcast. Marcus is on the, the on the call here. Uh, they did a beautiful job designing this trophy for us. Um, if you if you haven't seen it, pop onto the website and check it out. Or better yet, come to the technical conference so you can actually see it. They did a magnificent job on that. They designed the um, medallion that uh, we give for the um, executive director's award for volunteerism and they also designed the annual casting contest medallion um giving uh giving every uh, giving fair play to aristocast they were uh, very involved with uh the design and the manufacture of the hall of honor induction trophy uh as well as the innovator of the year award so uh Thanks to our members. We appreciate how you support us. All right. We're, ICI runs a webinar program. We're in one right now. And um, we are very fortunate to uh, have a uh, uh, an, an interesting uh, list of uh, mixed uh, speakers coming through here. I just want to touch on a couple of them real quick. You'll note that there's the Additive Manufacturing Roundtable listed twice. The topic for that is going for those will be determined at the uh, AM4IC event in Cleveland on March 14th and 15th. And like I say, we'll hear more about that later. Um, we try to uh, have people speak to or address issues that are of concern to the industry and try to do some education in the process. 
This is still a tentative schedule, and there will probably be more dates added. But uh, at a minimum, we're going to be doing webinars on these dates. And we are extremely fortunate to have uh, our next uh, presenter from April. We'll be talking at April, on April 5th, Lisa Ryan with us. Lisa is the uh, Chief Appreciation Strategist at Strategy. I'm very uh, honored to call her my friend. And she has uh, supported the ICI several times in the past. I'm going to ask Lisa to take a few minutes and just tell us uh, about her program and uh, what we have to look forward to next month. Sure. Well, even though when we were together in Puerto Rico a couple of years ago, God, can you believe what how the world has changed since then? We we talked about some strategies, some retention, some workplace culture strategies at that time, but the world has changed and we're not going back to the good old days of 2019. So when it comes to updating strategies, new expectations that employees have, new ways of looking at your business, even things like you know uh, different shifts and offering flexibility in a market where you think that you really don't have any flexibility, we're going to have just lots of ideas and strategies that you can use to um, keep up with it so that you can find and attract talent and keep them from becoming someone else's. And that's about it. All right. Well, thank you, Lisa. I look forward to uh, hearing your full talk on uh, April 5th. Sounds great. We'll see you then. All right. Take care. Um, let's see. I just wanted to also mention that uh, uh, our webinars, they are a members only benefit except for this one, because uh, we want our non-members to see what they're missing out on. So hopefully um, if you if we have non-members on the call here, you're taking note. Uh, otherwise, this will be put into the public domain. So when people are learning about membership, they'll get to hear about our program. Well, next item is something I am extremely excited about. It is it is uh, the Additive Manufacturing for Investment Casting Symposium. Um, just a few words on that, then I'm going to let, let somebody else talk about it. We originally set up AM4IC as one of our regional meetings uh, a couple of years back, uh, October of 2021, and still in the it come, just barely coming out of the pandemic, and we had a lot of folks want to come out to that. It was extremely well received. People saying you guys need to do this every year. Well, this year, this uh, this is actually going to be the first of the. Uh, annual events. We've got it uh, uh, introductory priced, so it's a, a great opportunity to come out to it. Um, breakfast and lunch is going to be included in the event, and we've got a great lineup of speakers. And uh, with that said, I'm going to turn the uh, stage over to our co-chairs for our additive manufacturing subcommittee to the technical committee. That would be uh, Mr. Don Deptowitz and um, um, and uh, Paul, Mr. Paul Finelt. So, guys, why don't you tell us about this? Joe, can you hear me? Perfectly. Great. As so I had to put in two computers because I'm traveling with them. One of them says it's got video. The other one says it's got audio. So I'm playing them both with no feedback. But um, as Joe mentioned, this is truly going to be a tremendous event. As of two weeks ago, we've had over 74 registrants. Uh, we've got some very dynamic speakers to talk technical, talk needs. I can tell you that our keynote speaker, Colonel Ryan from uh, TACOM on day two, I've worked personal programs with him. In fact, I was the first person to bring in lightweight armor on a program for him to compete against the steel industry. And everybody asked, how'd you make, how'd you machine those, Don? They look so different. So this is how we make castings, folks. It's, it's totally different. And, you know, when you think of AM, most of us, you your terminology is additive manufacturing. We think of it as advanced manufacturing. There is no silver bullet answer out there. Each one of us has different processes, different tools. Every one of us as an industry is at different levels. So we've got to help people to understand how do we apply technology in our processes? And I like to think of it as 
how do we accelerate the manufacturing world into the 22nd century? By trades, I'm an aerothermal dynamicist. I design the parts that you guys hate to make. But through my career, I've been able to work the entire supply chain from the raw materials to the castings, machinings, forgings, coatings, and work with my customers because many of my parts are out there for 70 years. And those are the ones that are flying in the sky. So we've got opportunities to do things collaboratively together. And if you look at some of the people that have registered for the program, we've been able to get Grumman Aerospace, the Air Force casting people are going to be there. We've got machine shop people who have showed up today to see their roles in there. So this is truly a cross industry barrier breaker. We're going to have people coming together talking because I think Collaboration and communication is one of our biggest challenges and problems. And with the agenda we've got set up, it's going to be very bi-directional to where we will have papers, we'll have moderators, we'll be able to exchange information live throughout the event. We'll have working sessions afterwards. We're going to, we've got an opportunity to have poster boards. And it's going to evolve from a really a annual event to a living event. Uh, we want to keep this alive throughout all year to help industry. As Joe mentioned, there's two webinars uh, followed up for the rest of the year, this year. I've got more volunteers volunteering to come speak at the webinars. This, I mean, it's the excitement is building. And I think after the event, the excitement will build building even greater in that. So we've got to be bold and drive change. And it's hard for those of us in industry to really make changes. But we know how to do things, some of us, and it's how do we work together to make those changes happen. I used to tell all my design people that we're all manufacturers and they hated it. But I always used to tell them that some make good, some make trouble, and others make excuses. And I think the most of you on the phone know who makes the excuses is the design guys that just says, figure out how to make it. Well, we're crossing those boundaries. We're breaking those silos down. So, Paul, I'll give you a chance to talk a little bit, if you would. Sure. Thank sure. you. Uh, I think the uh, the focus, and excuse me because I'm, I'm getting feedback on my uh, – my uh, Bluetooth headset. Uh, the the focus of the of the symposium really is to uh, provide a a really good educational venue for for everyone. Uh, we've asked all the speakers to not uh, commercialize their their presentations and uh, and focus on the educational aspects of what they're they're discussing. Uh, and and so we we really hope that there there will be an, an exceptional amount of value for the two days that you spend uh, with us. Uh, we have uh, working uh, hard to try and attract some uh, some academics to to join us and and provide some other uh, educational perspective. But uh, but the perspective will. We, we will drive the perspective to be uh, focused on the problems that foundries have in adapting and adopting additive manufacturing techniques uh, and uh, really to make it an educational opportunity to exchange across the entire supply chain the information that, uh, that's needed to make uh, investment casting a strong partner uh, throughout the entire supply chain. So uh, uh, we've all worked uh, very, very hard to make sure that that goal is achieved. And one of the things that uh, that I personally would like to ask each and every one of you who is either a foundry or an affiliate uh, member, whoever, or, or even if you're not, uh, to please provide us with uh, some feedback. Uh, what you think is uh, is a gap? You know, there's the the as is, the to be, uh, and then there's a gap that's got to get filled in every uh, in every process improvement opportunity. So uh, we'd really like to uh, we're gonna we're gonna make opportunities to to, uh, to gather that information, 
at the symposium. But if we can do anything, uh, you know, beforehand that would enhance it, um, you know, uh, Joe's got an agenda for the symposium that I believe has gone out already. Uh, and if it's not, I know it's available on the ICI website. Um, but uh, getting good feedback from everyone and uh, uh, is, is really critical. Uh, and look forward to meeting each of you personally at the, uh, at the symposium. Thanks. Well, thank you, Paul, and thank you, Don. Um, I just want to add uh, one or two things to this uh, briefly. You know, uh, Paul had mentioned the uh, the poster boards, or maybe Don did. Maybe you both did. I don't know. But um, one of the things that we're doing, we're trying to use this event also as an outreach event to students. Um, we're not charging students for, att uh, for attending, and we are having a poster board contest. Uh, we've yet to receive any, and maybe uh, the we've not reached the uh, universities adequately. But uh, we have we have a template to, uh, to be used. Uh, Paul did a great job putting that together. Um, students are welcome to enter a a, a poster board uh, depicting uh, some aspect of the process, uh, um, how they see it used, or so forth. And like uh, we will be doing with the casting contest at the tech conference. This will be voted on by the people who, who attend the event. The winner will receive a $500 scholarship. The, uh, so um, I encourage you, if you know any students who, uh, who are uh, technologically focused, encourage them to, to enter. Uh, this is uh, um, a little free exposure that they can get to the industry, and uh, they may get some of their books paid for. So, again... Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Don. These two guys did a great job uh, on everything they did to pull this together, and I am uh, anticipating joyfully the event that we're having in two weeks. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. Moving on, um, our next item I want to touch on is our Business and Leadership Development Conference, um, which uh, we're holding in uh, Key Largo. Uh, to talk about that, I'm actually going to ask uh, one of our directors who was recently down there, Mr. Brad DeSplinter, to uh, share his thoughts on it. Uh, hey, good morning, everybody. Um, this is Brad. Uh, hey, so the, the BLDC is going to take place in Key Largo this year. And for those who don't know, Key Largo is the first of the keys that you hit uh, as, as you head south from Miami. But uh, uh, typical to, you know, we used to have uh, our, our spring management meeting is what we called this. And uh, a couple of years ago, you know, right about the time that COVID hit and changed everything for everybody's lives, uh, we rebranded to the Business Leadership and Development Conference with the idea being that we wanted to have this be something that was more than just uh, owners or presidents of companies coming together but uh, for this meeting, but to have something that was more of a a meeting that was going to benefit, uh, you know, up and coming managers or any manager within within each company. Uh, still, you know, with some highlights of things that are going to benefit uh, uh, the senior management and the uh, uh, the senior leadership of the company, but something that's going to be available to teach uh, uh, many people uh, a lot of different things that's going to help them out. So you'll notice it is uh, you take a look at the agenda that it has changed some so that uh, it is more applicable to uh, many, many levels within an organization. So uh, again, as is typical, and I think Joe, uh, Joe kind of highlighted a little bit, we will have several of the, the topics that we have every year. We're gonna have our labor law update, uh, our market uh, um, update um, uh, that Joe does, uh, an economic outlook, from Ken Malin. There's going to be some additional information on additive manufacturing, uh, a couple of topics on working with the ATF, and there's also a presentation on a new NADCAP investment casting audit introduction. So those are a few of the things that go on. Um, Joe's got up on the screen right now something uh, we'll talk about our uh, 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 John Manzella who is our keynote speaker, who um, I have not heard speak, but have read quite a bit of information about. And uh, uh, the keynote speaker is always kind of a, uh, a highlight of the meeting and kind of gets uh, kicks the meeting off with everybody being able to have a uh, uh, some very thought-provoking and, and interesting speaking. So uh, 
beyond that, uh, that's all kind of the nitty gritty that goes with uh, the BLDC. So the big key that people take out of this meeting, uh, probably as much or more so than even the technical conference, is the networking that happens. It's a it's a smaller venue. It's a smaller event. Uh, the people that are involved, uh, um, there's not, you know, 700 people that are going to be there. It's going to be somewhere 120, 150 people, hopefully, that are in attendance. And it's going to be a, a much more intimate uh, setting and crowd. So that gives you an opportunity to do a lot more uh, networking. Um, the meetings tend to go from about uh, eight in the morning till uh, about lunchtime, maybe one o'clock, which gives some uh, additional time in the afternoon for people to uh, do some of that other networking they want to do and to be able to do something with uh, uh, friends and colleagues, you know, that you may not get to do every other time. And the fact that we're having it in Key Largo, which is absolutely gorgeous. If you, you know, you take a look, you've got, uh, I'm a little worried here, John, uh, I'm looking at you in this picture and I'm seeing two sunsets and I'm wondering if Joe's trying to suggest that you're uh, off to your sunset here too. I don't know <laughs> if that was, uh, some subliminal thing he was doing here or not, but, uh, at any rate, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the event always has lots of opportunities. Like I said, for, for networking, there is a, uh, uh, the resort itself is, what, what I think is a great size for our size of event, uh, big enough that there's enough space for people to get around, do different things, uh, you know, a nice pool to lounge around it in the evening time. Uh, they have a wonderful sunset uh, traditions that they do there. And as you can see, the sunsets in the picture, you right there on the beach with the sunset. It is on the uh, uh we're more on the Gulf side with this resort, so uh, you don't have the, the riptides and anything, but a little bit more calm water to, to be there. Um, meeting rooms are, 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 are right there on the premises. It's, you know, uh, from any one of the rooms to the meeting room might be a, a five-minute uh, little walk. And uh, uh, the resort does have a lot of things that they offer in the afternoon. I know uh, I'll pick on John again here. I know that he did a little bit of fishing. He and Ty Ulan had a, somewhat of a little uh, uh, fishing contest that they did. And this is uh, all with equipment that's you know, just right there at the resort, that the resort provides you everything from, from fishing equipment to bait. So uh, lots of things to do, lots of things to enjoy yourself there, to be able to relax a little bit, learn a little bit, and uh, uh, network with uh, uh, old friends and meet some new friends that you want to network at with for years to come. Um, the resort itself is, as I said, on the Key Largo, which is the first key south of uh, Miami. It's about an hour south of Miami Airport or maybe an hour and a half south of uh, Fort Lauderdale. So there's two places that are good options to fly into. Um, there are some shuttles that are available uh, if you don't want to rent a car. And, you know, uh, uh, when I was just down there, I Ubered, which was extremely convenient. Um, and uh, I didn't have to pay for a rental car that was just going to sit in a resort and you know, I get to pay, or, you know, pay the resort to let me park it there. So that worked out quite well. But there are some shuttles, but I would highly recommend for anybody who's going to go that they uh, go online, look at the uh, uh, the shuttle that's for the Keys, and the shuttle will start up at Fort, La Fort Lauderdale, stop down at uh, Miami, then at Key Largo, and then go all the way out to Key West, turns around and comes all the way back. So uh, when you're on this, there's only a few shuttles a day, and you want to make sure that if you're thinking about using the shuttle that you're planning your flights and the shuttle arrangement and uh, uh, according to what the time frame is, because the shuttles just kind of go, come and go. It's not uh, on your schedule. It's on theirs. Uh, otherwise, I said, like I used an Uber and that worked out really well for me. So uh, I'm, I'm, um, I'm hoping that we're going to have a great, great event. Uh, I know that the speakers will be great. I know that the networking will be great. And I know that the facility is great. Now it's just a matter of uh, what are we going to do for having, uh, what kind of a turnout are we going to get? So if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer anything about the resort when we were there or anything about the BLDC in general. If not, thank you. All right. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate you uh, uh, sharing your thoughts with us. Um, and now we're going to go to the uh, guy centered at the bottom of the screen, Mr. John Marson, who uh, uh, clearly is inviting all of us to lunch. He he had previously implied that I was buying, but he's doing the inviting, so I think we should let him pay. 
Anyhow, we are going to be uh, next addressing our 70th annual technical conference and exhibition, uh, which uh, I hope you could tell from our uh, logo is going to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, with that said, I'm going to turn this over to John to tell you all about that. Uh, another director, and currently he's our past president uh, with the uh, on the board of directors. He is an officer in the ICI. So, John. Thanks, Joe. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, glad you could attend this session. Um, so, yeah, this is a momentous occasion. 70 years. Amazing. Uh, 70 years of... Uh, of ICI technical excellence and uh, supporting our membership. So, so a real milestone, and it's going to be in uh, sunny Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, where the smokestacks have subsided over the years, and it's actually a really nice city. Uh, the theme is bridging investment casting technology to the future. So, thus the theme of the bridges, and uh, it's going to be held at the, as you can see here, at the Weston Hotel, which is connected to the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. So very convenient. You just uh, just walk from your, your room downstairs across and uh, you're right in the convention center. So can't be more convenient than that. Uh, it is gonna be open to the general public. So uh, both uh, members, non-members, everybody can attend, uh, international people. Uh, we hope to, uh, to get a good showing there. Uh, we just had our world conference last year, and even with COVID, we had uh, really, really good attendance uh, and much greater than a typical uh, technical conference. So uh, we're hoping to get the same here. Uh, we have a real treat for a speaker. As you can see, the uh, gentleman uh, in the picture over there is Colonel Greg Gadsden. You may recognize him because he was in the movie Battleship, who was fighting the aliens in Hawaii. Uh, trying to protect Hawaii from the aliens. So uh, he's actually a well-accomplished uh, Army veteran, uh, 20 years in the Army. He retired as a colonel, uh, former commander of Fort Belvier uh, Garrison uh, down south. He was a field artillery officer with, that had active duty in operations Desert Storm, Desert Shield, uh, Joint Forge, Enduring Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom. So a lot of military uh, accolades, a Bronze Star recipient, and uh, unfortunately, uh, a roadside bomb uh, took off both his legs. So he was one of the first uh, first amputees who uh, used a new technology that allowed uh, better prosthesis, uh, more more technical uh, uh, innovation to allow him to actually walk as normal rather than most prosthesis. So. Uh, so active movie star, he's going to give us a motiva motivational speech on uh, or organizational behavior and uh, how he, through his challenges throughout his life, um, overcame many of those things as a team. Uh, he was also a football player at West Point, so, and also was a good friend when the New York Giants uh, won the Super Bowl. Uh, he got an honorary Super Bowl ring out of that, so uh, uh, from his uh, buddy who was a coach on a team. So anyway, uh, looking forward to that as a, as a kickoff for this session. Um, and as, as is typical, we have a uh, medley of papers. Uh, the technical committee uh, has a review board, which is trying to improve the papers over the years. So there's less sales pitches and more technical information that runs the gamut from the wax process all the way through, you know, inspection and out the door. So, uh, uh, we're uh, soliciting for papers right now. We have a pretty good arsenal of papers, and I think people will be very pleased. Uh, we have a standard format of presentation, which uh, which uh, brings consistency to the talks so that uh, there's actually an objective and some supporting evidence and actually some concluding remarks from each one so that you're, you're taking home some really good, valuable information that you wouldn't normally have uh, seen before. Uh, it is an expo, so we'll have 100 tabletop exhibitors. It's not a full equipment show, but it is a tabletop exhibit. So we're, uh, you know, there's plenty of space. So if you are interested in uh, being an exhibitor, get there early. We have pretty good response rate for that so far. So uh, see Joe at the uh, Investment Casting Institute. And then it's a great networking opportunity. So no place to... Uh, you know, gather with a bunch of foundry people than at a technical conference. Uh, we, uh, as I said, have a good supplier network, university network, uh, uh, the foundries themselves, and people that uh, 
are 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 starting up new businesses to support the industry, uh, including the additive manufacturing people that uh, Don and Paul just spoke about. Uh, as is typical, we have really good receptions, good food, and good drink. And so, what could be better for Foundry people than that? And uh, you know, a Sunday welcome reception and a Tuesday reception. And we're planning some uh, some events that the members could attend during the session as well. So um, I think that's uh, pretty much covers most of it. I don't know if there's any questions. No well, questions. it doesn't seem there's questions, but I do want to add, we are still accepting submissions of abstracts for the technical conference. Uh, John is intimately aware of that because he and a number of other folks review every single one. Um, and again, the our papers are non-commercial, so we uh, look for folks to uh, do presentations, um, either a foundry or being paired with a foundry in the presentation to give uh, information credibility and uh, non-commercial. And I always tell people, I love it when somebody gets up on stage and gives a presentation with a takeaway that somebody can go back to their foundry in action immediately. So. If you've got a great thing to talk about, I encourage you, get an abstract into Nora D'Ambra. Uh, um, she consolidates them and provides them to the technical committee for review. And uh, can't wait to hear you talk. So thank you on that. Anything else, John? All right. Well, all right. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Well, you may think that that's the end of the agenda, but I do want to make a special recognition today. Um, we uh, we have just come up on another anniversary, which really hasn't been publicized, but our own Nora D'Ambra has achieved 15 years of service with the Investment Co uh, Casting Institute. We wouldn't be here doing this today if she's not coordinating it, working things in the background, plus the 9,000 other things she does to uh, give our members a fantastic experience. So, Nora, I know you're on the call. I'm not going to make you uh, uh, jump up there and show your face or anything, but I do want to show that we did recognize her this morning in a hybrid event. The original plan was I was going to be in New Jersey. We were going to do a nice luncheon yesterday and surprise her with the, uh, a present, but the Mother Nature did not cooperate, and I'm sitting here in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, so rather than holding her present, uh, we did a hybrid presentation this morning, and uh, we all let uh, Nora know how much we appreciate her and depend on her. And um, I'm just going to open up the mic. If anybody wants to say anything to Nora, just shout it out. Thank you very, very much, Joe. Thank you, my team. Thank you, everybody, our members, our board of directors. I really enjoy working with all of you, as you can tell, since I've been here for so long. <laughs> but um, thank you. I appreciate it all. Thanks. And it was a shame we couldn't get together yesterday. We were looking forward to, to being together. But there is that BLDC coming up. That's right. So we're all looking forward to that. Well, thank you, Nora. And uh, with that said, I just want to thank you. For attending we can't do this without you and i want to express my special thanks for those folks who let me save my voice today uh, by um, sitting here and chatting with you and being the uh, subject matter experts on the areas we were addressing so th thank you all folks are there any questions about anything we actually have five minutes left on the clock so if there's anybody anything anybody wants to ask we are open to question and you've got a couple of board members here to answer them too Hey, Joe, it's Eric. Is there still room at the Additive Manufacturing Conference? Is that still? Yeah, we are, we are at 80, we are at 83% of capacity. So that means there are some seats left. So uh, by all means, if you want to get some folks out here, please, uh, please uh, um, have them sign up. Great. Thanks. Yeah, no, if we, if we do hit 100% capacity there, I believe there's an air wall and i think we can pop that open and use the space behind us we haven't reserved it yet though because we don't know if we're going to need it so uh right now we're at about 83 percent capacity any other questions that mean 83 participants joe 
Uh, yes, 83. It sounds better when you say you're at 83% capacity, though. But yes, 83 first participants. The first one of these that we did, we had, uh, um, we, we were in the 30s. Uh, I, I forget the exact number. And uh, our uh, when you compare it to a, a regional meeting, we generally cap that at 60. So right now we have a room set up at uh, for 100 people, and if need be, and if the space is available, we can go beyond that. But what I really want to highlight here is most of our events, and we hate this when it happens this way, but most of our events, we get a third to a half of our uh, attendees registering within the last two weeks before the event, which makes planning very difficult for us um, a lot of hotels the room rates are already gone at that point our room block is closed so we encourage people to register early but if uh, history holds true and we're at 83 uh, percent right now we're probably going to have to check out getting that uh, opening that air wall but you never know people are so excited about this they may have registered early so we'll we'll find out over the course of the next two weeks any other questions or comments? All right. Well, again, I want to thank you all for being here. I look forward to seeing you all come on back on uh, April 5th. We'll get to hear Lisa Ryan uh, talk about how we work in this new work environment, the, the, new, the new system that we're living with uh, as far as uh, keeping, retaining, and attracting our employees. So until then... Uh, everybody be safe, and I hope to see you in Cleveland on the 14th and 15th. Take care.